All right, here from Excite Ballpark, San Jose Giants baseball, I'm Joe Rizzo, and joined by a special guest today, former San Jose Giants player from, what, about 20 or some odd years ago now, and now, of course, the farm director in the organization, Kyle Haynes. Kyle, it's always great to catch you up. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Thanks for reminding me how long it's been since I've been a young uh, player, but uh, appreciate it. But yeah, <laughs> glad to be here. All right. Well, I, I was just starting off, too, in, in, those, <laughs> in those days. A lot, a lot of great teams in the the mid-2000s. Well, we'll get to some of the players here in San Jose in a moment, but the Major League season well underway. So many homegrown players, and especially on the pitching side, when you look at that starting rotation, uh, it's three of the five guys are are homegrown, some bullpen guys as well. I mean, as the farm director, that must make you feel good about what's been happening in this organization here lately. Yeah, it's, um, you know, when you start to see the the, that, that bullpen or the rotation or the lineup and, and sprinkled in, you know, it, it's just uh, encouraging because you see where these kids start from. You're with them the day they sign. Their eyes are, are, are on Oracle Park, and they're excited about wearing the orange and black. And to see their dream come true uh, is very exciting for everybody. And it's also motivating to know that uh, we're going to give those opportunities to our young players. And they've obviously earned them, but we know we're just one part of acquisition here. We're going to have to make trades. We're going to have to make free agent signings. Um, but it's just there's something special about those homegrown players that our fans see in the San Jose Giants uniform and make their way into San Francisco. And some of those San Francisco starters, I mean, very different uh, ways of getting up to the highest level. Kyle Harrison just kind of shot right through as a young guy, number one prospect. Keaton wins a different story. I mean, injured, and he missed basically two full years. And I think it's got to be fun to kind of see those different roads that guys are taking. Yeah, absolutely. And each one's development path is not just different from the levels they went through but also the the growth is different and um you know with with keaton we've seen up to 99 mile hour fastballs as a starter and i remember him starting uh out with us first year it was more than that in like 91 94 range and and had a kind of a sinker slider and now he's mid upper 90s with a wipeout split finger that he didn't even learn until year two with us so you know you see the velo increase you see this this split finger, but also you just see the kid mature from a young boy with uh, bright eyes and, and into a man just like Kyle Harrison, who's you know mature beyond his years in his preparation. And, and you know I think our veteran players deserve a lot of credit too for for helping those guys grow up really fast. All right, well let's talk a little bit about the San Jose Giants, and specifically I wanted to ask you about this level, the the single A level. It's the first of four stops among full season affiliates. Players that come here generally don't have a, a lot of professional experience yet. What makes this such an important level for guys from your perspective, and, and what are you hoping to see out of players here, just kind of generally speaking, over the course of the season? Yeah, we've just seen so much of a you know weird dynamic shift as the minor leagues kind of smaller, and we, we don't have that short season level anymore that where they play the first time in stadiums. So you get a wide variety of experience levels that are merging together, um, and, and, and realistically, you start to realize like a lot of these players have never played in front of fans. They've never played with music on and, uh, you know, the beer batters going crazy, <laughs> right? Like they're handling a lot of emotions they've never handled before, including playing on televisions where their family can watch them. And, um, you know, there's that dynamic. Then you also have the SEC player, the ACC player coming in, uh, blending in with them. But uh, I think one thing we're wanting to see is is just how do they respond to the day-to-day grind of minor league baseball, and can they handle success? Can they handle failure? Can they handle playing tired and sore after you know day games after night games? Can they handle you know playing a team six straight days and a few weeks later playing that same team again and, and making adjustments as the league makes adjustments to them? Those are things that you don't experience at the rookie ball level. Mm-hmm. Visiting here with Kyle Haynes, San Francisco Giants farm director. Kyle visiting San Jose here for a few days individually. Uh, top of the list here on this club, uh, you start with the first round pick, Bryce Eldridge, drafted out of high school. He's still a teenager. Drafted as a two way player, of course, pitcher and a hitter, but we all know he's focusing on the hitting side of things and playing first base uh, this year. Uh, what kind of went into that decision, and what have you seen here early on, going back to spring training out of Bryce as he embarks now on this first full professional season? Yeah, I think with Bryce, I mean, that question comes up a lot. Uh, also, cue at the Reggie Crawford conversation, so uh, we doubled up on that combo for uh, for us. But, um, you know, when it comes to, to Bryce, I think 
a big part of the decision is just basically this guy needs to get at bats. These at bats are so critical to the young hitters, to the young players, that anything that stood in the way of getting the at bats is going to be a hindrance to his long term development. And we're thinking long term. Obviously, do we want him to fly through the system as a two way player? You know, that'd be ideal, great, but that's not realistic. I mean, young players, and I, I bring it up all the time, Pablo Sandoval spent five years between rookie ball and all the A ball levels. Uh, uh, you know, and, and it takes time, and they got to get their at bats, and anything that's going to get in Bryce's way uh, to get those at bats uh, is ultimately not long term not going to be beneficial. Um, you know, I think, you know, the big thing for him this year is, is making sure he's facing plenty of pitching. Um, he's staying healthy, which right now he's got the little bit of the hamstring tightness going on, which hopefully we'll see him here in the next series or two. Um, but I, I think in general, one thing with Bryce is just adapting to professional speed is the clear number one priority. And he's done that really well so far, and he continues to make progress there. And, and we're just looking forward to getting back on the field and, and seeing that happen. Is it the power from him that, that more than anything else kind of jumps off the page for you right now? You know, I might have a different opinion than most people watch him. I really don't see six, seven guys when people mention power that have that short of a stroke and that good of an approach at the plate. Uh, I think what's what's wild is you can dream on the power, um, but he's a good hitter first. And I think that's what's really stood out to me is for a tall guy with long levers, six, seven, with good bat speed, good raw power, I think the first thing that anyone that watches him in person is going to stand out is he stands in there and has a good at bat. He doesn't cheat for power. He really stays within himself. is is a good stroke to the ball. Um, powered all fields. He's not just this get in there and try to just slug his way as the farthest homer he's ever hit in his life every at bat. He mm-hmm. he has an idea what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Up the middle, uh, Maui Ahuna, fourth round pick last year. You mentioned SEC. AC, he was an SEC guy, and jumping here to the California League didn't play last summer. Uh, after he signed, so jumping right into the professional game. Uh, exciting kind of tools that, that he features at the plate and his actions at short, I think, look about as good as uh, some of the more recent players we've seen play that position in San Jose. Yeah, um, you know, he looks the part during the, uh, the workouts, and also he's a productive college player. Um, you know, I go back to the bats. I think right now we're going to have some rust here early with a lot of these guys. And even though he was an SEC player a year ago, he missed the first part of the year as he worked through some like eligibility stuff with his transfer. Um, and then he also battled that, that back injury all year. And I think that was a part of you know him going from maybe first team caliber All-American to, to first team All-Conference type player. Um, and after he got over those, he put on some strength. I think as we get some more bats under him, I think we're going to see some offensive upside. And then that that pure, I mean, he's a shortstop, clear as day to me. And and I think he has as much of a chance to stay at short and impact the game as any player we have in the system. Mm-hmm. Cole Foster is drawing a lot of praise from the coaching staff here in San Jose with the kind of start he has gotten off to and shifting over to play more at second base, looking very comfortable over there. Yeah, I think we'd all love for Cole to play more short. But with Maui there, I think the best way to make both of them get plenty of playing time and experience is for Cole to play second. Uh, he's done a nice job filling it short, plenty of arm for short. Um, and a very highly regarded prospect himself. Um, you know, I think the big things is, you know, Cole coming out of high school was a really huge prospect, ended up making his way to college versus signing. Uh, and, you know, he's still kind of young for his age. He's played a couple years of college, and, and we're looking forward to kind of seeing how this year unfolds for him because I think as the weather kind of gets a little more steady and warmed up, we have a chance to see all those bats get warmed up as well. Mm-hmm. Well, a real strength of this San Jose team is is up the middle. I know you're excited about the catchers as well, but I also wanted to ask about center field and Jonah Cox, who uh, was also drafted last year, but a different path yeah. to get here because he was traded from Oakland uh, to the Giants in the Stripling deal. And uh, the way he's playing defense, the way he's running, uh, it seems like he's emerging as a real leader here in San Jose. Yeah, I, first of all, amazing kid. And I think as soon as we traded for him, every A's person that's in my phone was texting me how great of a kid we got. They were disappointed to see him go, but very huge praise about who he is as a person. Um, super athlete. I mean, he can really run, do a lot of things. And, you know, my memory of Jonah Cox goes back because we're close to the University of Oregon baseball team with our, you know, the shared facility in Eugene. And, and I was watching uh, their Super Regional last year, and I remember watching this guy just throw Oral Roberts right on his shoulders and take him to the College World Series. And I remember thinking, that's, that's the type of guy I would love on my team. And we saw him in the draft. I thought there was a chance we could get him. He ended up going away from us, but 
you know, I, I guess that's the way the world turns. Kind of has a way of, of bringing people where they're supposed to be, and we're super excited to have a player that that you know that Division One just you know all American caliber player who's a plus athlete plus makeup to be in our system. Mm-hmm. And uh, before I let you go, a little bit on the the pitching side of things, and you got a lot of arms here in San Jose, uh, fifteen pitchers, and I know guys are, are still building up. But uh, in terms of the starting rotation. Joe Whitman, uh, a high pick. I mean, he's here in San Jose. Josh Bostic as well. A uh, lot of potential. What, what's kind of catching your eye with some of the, the, the starting rotation pieces here uh, in the California League right now? Yeah, I, th- I think what a big one with, with Whitman is I think he's kind of coming into some velo that, um, you know, he didn't have last year. Um, he's always had that frame that looks like it could be a late bloomer. And I think we're starting to see some of that. Um, the velo has been nice to see. I still think he's trying to figure out a way to, to be a plus pitcher with a power fastball and maybe not overthrow here and there searching for those top end radar gun readings. So we'll continue to work on that. But obviously to see a lefty with that delivery, with his track record of college success and seeing the velo climb up, you know, it's, it's easy to dream on him. He comes to mind. And I think, in, you know, I know Bostic, he's still going to learn a lot. He's kind of a position player conversion in college. Um, I continue to think he, as he gets more experience, we're going to see him come into himself, but you know, also the bullpen has some nice stories too. I think interested to see you know how Trent Harris does. Trent Trent's really been a pleasant surprise for us, as well as, as Cody Tucker and some of these other names as well down there. That I think by the end of the year we could look up and, and be really surprised that some of these non drafted free agents emerged. All right, lots of arms here to follow in San Jose, Kyle. Finally, uh, going back to your playing days here, but we touched on how long ago that was, but. We were part of some pretty good teams here with the San Jose Giants. As you look back all these years later, I mean, what what are kind of your lasting memories about being a player here coming up through the Giants farm system? Yeah, um, well, I I don't know if it's a good thing. Uh, I played three different San Jose teams, so I had quite a few experiences. Usually you should only play one year, I think, in A-ball, but I played three. So you got to be good enough to stay around, but not good enough to move. But I think the one thing is, like, just the friendships continue. We, you know, I still play fantasy football with a massive group of guys that uh, we were all teammates. All Most of us in San Jose together, ironically. And um, just continue the connections and stories with Travis Ishikawa. You know, I saw Pablo in spring training a lot and just amazing. I mean, these guys are – I play with some of these guys longer in the giant system than I did with my own high school teammates. And – to see them go on and have the success that maybe I was dreaming for myself, but I was just meant for something different. I was meant to, to be a great giant in a different way. And we're all proud giants. I did a different path, but those teams were special. And I think back to wondering, I'm watching Tim Lincecum pitch. And I was like, if this guy's not a star in the big leagues, who is? And I didn't know at the time and, and to see his career unfold or, or even just, you know, someone like Steve Holm, you know, who I still talk to today and see him go from, org player to getting a nice big league run going those are those are stories that stay with me yeah it really was a special time in san jose mid to late 2000s preceding the the great run in san francisco in the first part of the 2010s kyle really appreciate the time and and your insight it's always great to catch up yeah thanks for having me as always all right that's kyle haynes the director of player development for the san francisco giants